Hi, I'm Jean Wells and I want to show you a technique from my new book, Intuitive Color and Design, second edition. Uh, this was a very fun book for me to do. I've been doing these techniques for about 12 years and taught lots and lots of classes. Um, and the quilt behind me is actually an accumulation of class samples for a whole year. And when I got ready to do the book, I thought, you know, I should just put together a quilt using um, all of those little class samples. I've already demonstrated how to do the gentle curve piecing, the narrow inserts. And the other thing that I really like to do, I call detail piecing. And you can see this looks like a little log cabin, but there's lots of little stuff in it. Um, here is just a narrow piece of scraps left over, um, another little small piece, and then another uh, kind of log cabin piece. So I'm going to show you how to go about that type of piecing. Now if you want to do a line of piecing, much like I did right here in this sample, um, I would lay out my pieces um, in a pleasing manner knowing that every time I take a seam off here, it's going to get smaller. So many times I will leave that end piece till the last and then cut it when I know exactly how much I need. Now here it is broken down and I've started sewing uh, pairs together. So started with the gray and the peach and uh, the violet and the green and then the orange and the green and I have the gray left to add on. But by the time I sew that together, it could then be inserted into piecing. Now the other technique that I uh, like to do is log cabin. And log cabin I call kind of a medallion sort of piecing because you're starting from the center and you're working outward. And there's two different ways that you can do that and you can create variations on either of those themes. One of them is to um, start with a center of some kind and I started with these two gray and peach pieces so I had to sew them together in a pair. Then I'm going to add a green and then add a purple. Now I could just add the green but I thought it would be more fun to add the two pieces. Then I can turn around and add the other green piece to the other side. Now this was the center where I started so maybe I then add this kind of light gray piece to this side of the center and this purpley piece to this side of the center. Notice how nothing is matching up yet and that's because we haven't stitched it together. I end up sewing pieces uh, and when I add them to the next piece then I trim off the extra seam allowance. I used to, when I was doing sewing, always throw away little pieces like this. But I found in the kind of work I'm doing now that they can end up being really interesting in the composition because it's a scale change. You're working with pieces that are smaller. In this uh, sequence of log cabin, I call it courthouse steps and that's what people for hundreds of years have called it, where you start with the center and you add one side to the center and then you go opposite and add the second side. So you can see they're opposite. Then I'm going to go to the other side and add a strip. But for this one, I think it'll be more interesting if I don't just do the purple, but put a little bit of green on the end of it. So I will sew these two together before I add them to this. And at this point, you can kind of see where I would need to trim these up because then I would make the edges so that um, none of the fabric was sticking out. 
So now I want to add the next set of strips. You can see this one is too long. So I would go ahead and trim this off before I stitch it. And then I want to make some interest up here. So I will sew these three pieces together and just let a little bit show of the orange and the purple and stitch them to the green. And these are opposite each other. Now I'm going to end with this peach on this side and the lavender on that side. So this is courthouse steps going opposite. Now the other way is, um, I just call it log cabin in the round, where here is my center square. And I have three pieces in my center square. And I've added the gray. Now I'm going to add this lavender piece with the green on it. Then a gray up here. But instead of going opposite, I am going one side to the corresponding next one to the next one, the next one. And here we go. And that creates a little more interest. One of the things that can happen is, let's say, instead of, I've added this gray strip here. I can add two strips to this side. I don't have to add just one. Then when I get ready to complete the log cabin, it would look like this. And I added two here instead of one. Now I make a lot of these just to kind of see how a color palette might look when I'm getting ready to do a quilt. And I put together this little pin cushion one um, and there's directions in the book for this. And I like to try out a palette of fabrics just to see how the colors are going to play together. And invariably, I will have thought that possibly a color was going to be used a lot. And then as I started working with them and sewing, some of them didn't work out that way. They ended up being more like an accent. You know, this dark purple is more like an accent. It's used less than it are the peach and the purpley colors. I'm going to show you another quilt where I use this technique. And you can see um, detail piecing. And then as I did my piecing in here, this is kind of like big pieces of detail. Here's the little narrow insert. Um, I've used a variety of grays and it was just much more interesting to me than picking just one neutral color to use in this quilt. Thank you for watching.